So whatever it is you're asking for, you need to, again, be building that faith, building that, you know, stubbornness in a good way. So you have that strong mindset of thinking, all right, I'm not going to let nobody's words deter me from my goal. I'm not going to let no one's words tell me the opposite of what God already told me. You need to go ahead and sure yourself up. Be confident in the choices that you make. Be confident in the voice that you hear in the Lord and do not let anybody tell you otherwise. What's poppin' people? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to get prepared for that blessing that you have been praying to God for. That very thing that you have been going to Him countless times over. How to get prepared for it. But before we move forward, I'm gonna remind you guys, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share this video with a friend, and leave a comment down below if you want me to elaborate on anything in the future but for now let's get started so that very thing that you have been asking God for you've been waiting for it you know be amazing blessing for you once it does happen because it will happen for you the first thing that you need to do to get prepared is understand fully what you are asking for and when I say understand fully what you're asking for I'm talking about asking yourself like okay what is it why do I want it what are the practical steps that I need to take to get there? Who's around me to help me push forward? Am I handling my money right right now? Am I being the person that I see myself being in the future? Like, what exactly, what are all the characteristics that I need? Because when you are waiting for a blessing, a lot of the things that need to happen first are internal. I say this all the time. But when you're waiting for a blessing, the things that need to happen, happen internal first. And those are things that you have the time to actually work on. So when you do get your blessing, you'll be able to sustain it because your character will be able to sustain it. So with that said, this is the time for you to get your insecurities together. I'm talking about like if you have relationship goals, if you have career goals, Whatever your goals are in life, everybody has insecurity. So that might be an insecurity of, I don't think I deserve the life that I want. Or I don't think I can ever get the man or the girl that I want to be with. I don't think I can ever be the person that I see in my head. Those are all insecurities and they're clearly not of God because they're all negative. You can get and you will get everything that you are praying and asking God for as long as you believe you can. But if you don't believe that you can, you obviously will not get it because you're not going to be putting in the work to get it. And you know the Bible says faith without works is dead. So if he doesn't see you making a step forward or making a step to even change yourself in the slightest bit, his hands are going to be kind of tied because it's just like, I love this person too much to give them something that they're going to potentially ruin because they're not taking the time to work on themselves. So if you think about relationships, you have this goal in your mind of having the husband or the wife and the family or whatever, but you have body insecurities, hair insecurities, skin color insecurities. You know, you have all these things that you're insecure about, but you have the time to fix them. So everyone, I'm all about, you know, loving your body, loving yourself, but there's nothing wrong with not loving it right now. I say embrace where you are, but work toward where you want to be. When you embrace what you do have, you are getting over that hurdle of being insecure and feeling less than, and you're loving yourself in the process. So you can have body goals, but embrace where you're at right now. You can have hair and skin goals, but embrace where you are right now. My skin is not the clearest, but I'm working on it. I'm not stopping that from letting me wear my wear bare face or wear makeup because I like it, and I know I'm working on my skin to get it to where I want it to be. Same with my body. I like my body, but I know where I want it to be, so I'm working on the things I need to to get to where I want it to be. And that's gonna help me with my own insecurities. Same with the career. If you feel like no one listens to you, if you feel like you're not a good speaker, if you feel like you do not effectively communicate, these are things that can be worked on. You can watch YouTube videos on how to effectively communicate. You can read books. You can talk to people and get their feedback. You have to work on whatever it is you're insecure about because whatever it is you're praying for, God will allow it once he sees you, again, making those necessary changes and steps to get to it. All right, so the next thing is can you handle it? I'm not just talking about insecurity-wise. I'm talking about who you are as a person. Again, not your insecurities, but in the sense of are you a responsible person? Do you value things? Do you have morals? Is your faith easily wavered? Because some of the careers that a lot of us ask for will put us in situations where our faith will be tested a lot of the time. And we need to be set in stone that we're not gonna let nothing hinder us from our faith. So whatever it is you're asking for, you need to again be building that faith, building that, you know, stubbornness in a good way so you have that strong mindset of thinking all right i'm not gonna let nobody's words deter me from my goal i'm not gonna let no one's words tell me the opposite of what god already told me you need to go ahead and sure yourself up be confident in the choices that you make be confident in the voice that you hear in the lord and do not let anybody tell you otherwise 
these are things that you can be working on if you don't already have them while you are waiting for that blessing to come to pass because that could be a reason God hasn't brought it yet. Like I said before, he's not going to bring us to something or he's not going to want to bring us something that we can't handle and sustain. And he will take it away if we take advantage or we choose to forget him once we, he blesses us. Why people do that, I do not know, but we're going to pray that none of us do that once we reach that blessing. Yes, every day is a blessing, but we all know those individual goals that we have for ourselves that we are longing for and we have been praying for. So ask yourself, do you have the character to sustain it? Once God blesses you, are you going to bless others because you are not blessed? Or are you going to be selfish and you're going to want to hoard everything because you're just like, I worked so hard to get here, I'm finally here. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not about to let anybody take anything from me, take advantage of me, like, no. You have to have the giving mindset because it was given to you. Remember, everything in this world is a gift. Nothing is really ours. If you serve God, you know it's all his and he's blessing us with it. So once he blesses us with it, we're supposed to be a testimony and an example of his love by blessing others. So again, ask yourself, can you handle the blessing that you are asking for right now? Will you compromise your morals and values once you get in that situation or even going toward that situation? If you're the kind of person that will compromise now, you're going to be the kind of person to compromise in the future. If you're the kind of person who doesn't value friendships and value family members now, you're going to be that person to do it in the future once you reach your blessing. So these are things that you have to think about and work on while you are waiting for the blessing to come. God wants us to sustain our blessings, you guys. Next thing, are you a good steward over what you have? I'm talking about jobs, chores, school, your car, your money. Like, And when I say steward, it basically means someone who's watching over something, someone who's in charge of something. So your car, I know this was my mindset for the longest and I had to switch it up and I didn't, God didn't bless me with a new one until I did switch it up because I had an old 2004 BMW. So many problems with the car, oh, so many problems. A lot of money went to maintaining that car and I just did not like the car. But because I had a, such a negative mindset toward the car, I wasn't really doing what I was supposed to be doing and taking care of what God blessed me with. So like I was holding off on oil changes. If it needed something, if I heard a noise, I was holding off getting to the mechanic. I had the money to get it fixed. I just was like, I don't care. I want a new car. I'm just going to leave this one in the dust, like whatever. And until my mindset changed, I didn't get a new one. I had to stick with that one for, I think, three, four years. But saying that to say, are you a good steward over what you do have? No, that may not be what you want, but whatever God's allowing you to have, he wants you to see, he wants to see how you take care of it. How do you see it? So even if you think about money, the little money that you do have compared to what you want in the future, he's going to look at, are you budgeting? Are you, you know, valuing your money? Are you paying your tithe? Do you give to others freely? He's going to be looking at all that with the little. And if he can trust you with the little, he's going to trust you with the lot. I know a lot of people say that all the time, but it's very, very true. Same thing with your job. Let's say you want to have your own business one day. You want people working for you one day. But the way you treat your boss, your company, you go to lunch early, you clock in late, or you show up late all the time, or when you get there, you're not really doing your job. Why would God bless you with your own if he can't trust you with the one that he gave you? Like you're not doing right by what you have. And then the other one, what is the motive? Like, do you want to be rich and famous or do you want to have your own job and what have you for selfish reasons or do you want to have them for good, giving, thoughtful reasons? You have to remember that God is a giving God. Yes, there are sometimes we want things for ourselves. There's nothing wrong with wanting something for yourself. But if your entire motive is very selfish, God's going to hold back on that blessing until you have a heart change and you have a heart of a giver because again God is a giving God he wants us to be that example and show his love through our actions and usually that's through giving whether it's time whether it's money whether it's just conversation how we give and how we treat others is the testimony to how God treats us that's how it's supposed to be but if your motive is purely selfish and you know, okay, once I've reached this level, I'm going to throw this person off. I'm just using them for now. And you're just kind of, you know, climbing the ladder, trying to use people and then dropping them off as you go. You're selfish and you're a user and God's not going to bless that. <laughs> like, why would he? You cannot say, oh, God did this to me, but you mistreated people in the process. They're going to be looking at you funny and then wondering how, you know, what kind of religion are they in? What kind of God do they serve that they act like this? You know? And then if you're also selfish, you can't think, I want God to bless you with millions and millions and millions to hoard. You have people who are millionaires, don't even give to their kids, don't even give to their family members. What? 
That's not what God wants us to do. He wants us to give to charity, give to family members, be able to be a blessing because you are blessed. That is what he wants. And again, nothing is wrong with wanting things for yourself, but if your motive is purely, purely selfish, that might be a very strong reason why that blessing has been on hold. Even relationships, let's say you have a desire to be married one day, you have a desire to have a family one day. You can have selfish motives in the terms of that's just what you want. You don't want it to be a testimony saying this is what a godly family looks like. You don't care if people like look up to your marriage or look up to your relationship and say, I want to do that. I want to pray with my husband. I want to wait for marriage. Like, If you don't care about those things, again, where are your morals? Where are your values? And why would God bless it? Because you know marriage is very sacred in God's eyes. So he's going to want that to be a blessing, especially in this generation. So every little thing, you have to ask yourself, what is the motive? Is it good? Is it bad? If it's, is it selfish? Is it not? And the last one, who is around you? That is what that is so important. You have to ask yourself who's around you because sometimes God will block our blessings because of who we're next to. Not because we're doing anything wrong, but because he knows that time we get there, that person will try to do something to sabotage it. Or where we are right now, that person is already sabotaging it. That person could be praying against you. That person could be plotting against you. You never know. So you have to ask God for that wisdom and discernment and determining who's actually for you, who's here to be with you long term, who genuinely loves you, who's not trying to use you. And if you don't ever have those conversations and you don't ever try to like figure it out for yourself, that's a very strong reason a lot of our blessings are blocked because some people aren't going to be able to handle your success. Some people are going to be jealous of you once you reach that amount of money. Some people are going to try to see it as an opportunity and then they're, and then they're going to become a user and then you're going to be hurt in the process. And then, you know, lots of things happen once you're dealing with a jealous person, a user. And how that, how that reflects on us is we become reserved or now we become really tight with our money and with our time. And we look at everyone with the side eye. And now we're, you know, walking in this world very timid and questioning everybody's motives and everything which is not a place that we want to be because now we're living in a bubble, living in a box, and we can't share God's love that way either. So you have to ask who's around you. Pay close attention to how they look at you when you have successes, how they talk to you when you're down. You have to pay attention. It's not just words, and not even just words to you. Like, if you're trying to determine if someone's actually for you, don't just listen to their words. Look at their body language because that says a lot and look at their eyes i had a friend who she would be very you know melancholy when i would give her good news but when i would give her bad news or say i'm sad she was very interested very in tuned and you know she really just kind of wanted to like harp on that but when i had good news it was just like oh, okay good good for you like you know very just eh. and for me i i noticed it right away we're not friends anymore but i noticed it and that's a subtle sign of a hater and someone that's not really for you because they can't celebrate with you they rather celebrate or you know they want you to be down if they're down or even if they're not down they want you to be down because they want to feel superior and you don't need people like that in your life so when it comes to trying to figure out if your friend is for you again listen to the words and watch their body language another way is listen to how they talk to you about others how they treat others in front of you they may not be treating you like that but if they'll treat somebody else like that you know that that is even in them like you know that they're that negative you know that they're that belittling you know that they're that gossiper so do not assume or do not think that they won't do those things to you you are not exempt okay they're just not doing it in front of you that's it so I hope this video was really helpful for you guys I hope I broke down some really good points I hope you guys practice them and that we all can get to that blessing that we want and that we all start getting prepared for it start budgeting start speaking life start checking who's around you start asking God to do that heart change showing you you making yourself a giver not a selfish person you know really just work on yourself that's really what this video is about working on yourself once god sees that you are taking the steps to be who you want to be you're taking the steps to be that person that you see in your head that person that you see having that family and that business and that career once he sees you taking those steps he's not he's going to be able to bless you because you are now operating in faith and faith without works is dead but it's also he's going to know that you have strong faith because you are moving toward a direction that you don't even know will ever happen and that is actual faith it's like if you can see it it's not faith so when you're moving towards something that you can't even see that is strong crazy faith that he is going to honor and bless because it is written Hope this video was helpful for you guys. I hope you guys liked it. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Share this video with a friend. I'll wait.
You should do it? Good. Remember, you guys, you want to set yourself up to win. Hope to see you guys in that next video. You don't want to miss 5 Day Friday, where I break down key Bible and life videos in under five minutes. And don't forget to follow me on my social so you can stay up to date on what I'm going to post on here and throughout the week, because only, only here is only two days, but throughout the week, it's at least five, okay? So follow me on my social so you don't miss a beat. But in the meantime, in between time, I will see you next time. Bye.